I'm Dick Boak with the Martin Guitar Company, and I'm really thrilled to be here with Steve Howe, who I'm talking to via Skype over in London. And uh, uh, hi, Steve. Hi there, Dick. Thrilled to be with you. Oh, well, thanks very much. So we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the Cross Styles uh, Summer Camp that Steve is going to be hosting this summer. It's happening uh, August 19th through August 23rd this summer, 2013, at the beautiful Blue Moon Resort in Big Indian, New York, which is about 20 miles west of uh, Woodstock. It's a beautiful little place. And what are you going to be doing, Steve? Well, I'm going to be doing uh, my own style of uh, uh, workshops where we um, you know, have opportunities to stretch across the, some of the things I've learned and uh, some of my um, inspirations and some of my uh, habits and enjoyments, you know, for the whole guitar world in general, but that's a big topic and I think, you know, that's why the way I learned the guitar was not through, uh, you know, uh, learning music and learning the whole concept, I just used my ear and that's kind of what my message is, it's a kind of like, use your ears better and uh, maybe you don't have to get involved in the whole notation story because I've got here by not doing that, so there must be some merit in it. Well, you've done you've done really well with it, and and uh, students are going to be attending this and signing up and registering. And uh, I think it's important to let people know that they just can't show up at the camp; they need to register. And uh, students can register at at uh, crossstylesmusicretreat.com. Uh, they can send inquiries about the camp to info at crossstylesmusicretreat.com and there's actually a phone number too which is 845-254-8009 for uh, more information. We've been working, uh, both of us uh, have been working with the camp in preparation of, of Steve's uh, workshop and I'm really honored to have been invited to, to give a pre presentation there with Steve uh, called uh, The Evolution of the Martin Guitar or The American Guitar and uh, Steve has uh, graciously agreed to, to uh, uh, join me in that to uh, play uh, a number of priceless instruments from the Martin Museum collection. So Steve and I go uh, pretty far back. I can't actually remember the exact year that we started, but we, you came onto our radar because you were playing uh, uh, an old uh, 0018 Martin guitar. That's right, yeah. I bought that guitar in uh, 1968. It was 15 years old then. And um, I guess I went for it because it was uh, a guitar I'd quite thought about for a long time. And I'd seen Paul Simon playing similar models. And um, it was quite a popular guitar, but there weren't many in London at that time. And I saw one and I snapped it up for £132, I think it was. And um, it seemed to be the archetypal guitar for me. In other words, I'd played archtop guitars mainly before that. And, uh, you know, I had a solid and, you know, some other guitars. But as far as acoustic, it was always that archtop sound. And I desperately wanted to get off that and uh, get on to uh, a flat top. And this seemed the perfect opportunity. So for years and years, I bashed away at that guitar. I, I stepped on it once on live on television <laughs> in Germany. I managed to uh, put a crack in it, and that was beautifully fixed by your good cells. The, the second time it was fixed, it was fixed forever, perfectly, by Martin Guitars. And uh, that guitar really stood me very, very well until I, I, I decided I wanted to get a you know, cutaway mm -hmm. stick and, and have more access. And as I was writing more tunes and developing more music to play on solo guitar, I found that... Um, I could really use a, a, a few extra frets and also uh, a cutaway. So that's where the MC28 came into the story, really. Well, you, the, the 0018, that's uh, the same guitar that Martin Carthy plays, uh, uh, and a and, uh, fantastic player. And, and also Bob yeah. Dylan, I think, started uh, one of his very early guitars was a 0018. So the, yeah. MC, the MC28... Uh, came out right around the time that I started at Martin, uh, which would have been the late 70s, early 80s. And I remember uh, back at that time, we did a little advertising campaign with you uh, about the guitar, and, and that was special for us. Yeah, that was the sort of introduction of our, our uh, uh, collaborations, really. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, and actually, yeah, well, I mean, it uh, seems like it's been a long collaboration and it's had various uh, you know, uh, spikes in it, like the, mm -hmm. the introduction of the 0018 Steve Howe and then later the MC38 Steve Howe. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a wealth of... Uh, plans and, and developments and uh, it's been great fun Dick, really good fun. You should be proud that the 0018 uh, SH Steve Howe model that, that we did with you led to the repopularization of the 00 size and it actually led to the Elizabeth Cotton model which uh, she played upside down and mm -hmm. uh, and it's become quite a popular model with, uh, uh, with both male and female uh, users, players mm -hmm. Uh, mm. Because of its comfort and its uh, brilliance of tone, uh, yeah. the, so the MC30 MC28 uh, had elect an electronics package. Uh, did you you got one with the electronics? Yeah, I guess I changed the electronics several times in that guitar until I got happy. I I don't even know what the story was, but you know I tried things and a new model came out, obviously, and we tried that. And then more complex models came out with microphones, and then somebody said to me, put two microphones in it, that would be even better. So the system got more and more complex. And now I don't actually go that way. I, I like to get a guitar, a bit like I like cars. I don't like them uh, customized, really. And guitar's the same. So when a guitar can arrive at, to my door and I can play it and it, it does the job, I, I'm not looking to mess with that. Right. And we get a great sound from the Aura uh, Fishman system. Oh, yeah. We've, got, we've tried different versions of that, and different different models have different versions of it, but we're, we're always quite happy with that. And, you know, we don't, we're not shy to use a microphone in front of it, because we think that, we feel that whatever you do from a DI point of view is terrific, and it really makes acoustic guitar more, um, you know, you can travel easier with it. And, uh, but having a microphone never hurts, and so we mix the mic, the front mic, with the internal electric system. Mm -hmm. So the MC28 led to the M MC38 uh, limited edition, which w was really inspired by the MC28, and and uh, that's really a, a very contemporary guitar. Beautiful guitar, uh, a little bit more upmarket, a little bit more subtly decorated because you know heavy heavy uh, decoration for me is a little bit i mean you know i like to see the fingerboards <laughs> right <laughs> not have too much uh, razzle dazzle on that because uh, it doesn't help really but of course there are guitars where it works and on on the way we or you in fact the way we collaborated and, and uh, we've got a nice level of uh, beautification without it being intrusive was great and you know just developing all the fine points was terrific fun and uh, you know we're very happy with uh, well i'm using them I will be using one most probably at this uh, at this camp. So, uh, in addition to the acoustic guitars, you, you're also you're also a phenomenal electric guitar player, and and you'll have some electrics too at the camp. I figured so. Um, I'll definitely have a Line Six Variax because you know it's odd that that guitar came along, and many guitarists tried like hell to ignore it or maybe didn't even get to hear about it but to me that's a lot of fun because i can demonstrate the textual differences really between the electric guitars and, and that's quite uh, enormous but of course my main um, guitar i came through with is, is the es 175d gibson and uh, that's a tremendous guitar i still have my original one i have several uh, mm -hmm. different models one from 63 one from 64 and then of course Gibson were kind enough to do the, the Steve Howe model of the 175, which had a few of the slight changes I've put on it uh, uh, over the years. So, uh, of course, electric guitar effects, uh, Line 6 HD 500, pedal board is a small but stunningly uh, varied equipment. So I've, I've tried to keep on the, the leading edge of, of the developments that have happened with the guitar, not least of all, of course, in the 80s, the MIDI experiment. Right. And, uh, you know, I love the sound of the guitar, so sometimes I might midi it up and I you know, hear the odd piano or something that I've played on a guitar that uh, on, on a, a homebrew or, or various places. But in the most part, what I do now over the last 20 years has been, you know, re-evaluate, re re-evaluating the, the, the beautiful sound that you can get from a guitar. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to do anything to it. It doesn't need help. It doesn't need a doctor. You know, I mean, a guitar is, is a wonderful instrument, and, and everything with a sound has to start from a good basic sound. And if you, you know, if you want to add, you know, 
the kitchen sink to it, then great. But you still got to come back to something that's a great guitar sound, and that's why my work with Martin and Gibson and and Line Six and and not least of all Fender and and uh, all sorts of companies over the years has has you know has encouraged me and allowed me to you know have a uh, have a constant flow of new ideas coming at me from uh, left and right you know acoustic electric synthesis and also programming and mm -hmm. uh, you know making the guitar sound in, you know different you know which is one thing I was doing you know, right from the beginning with pedal boards. And so my, my, my story in electric is actually quite important to me. But uh, my writing is always done on acoustic guitar. I rarely write music much on, on electric instrument. I just, it just doesn't really happen. I mean, obviously I improvise, but uh, that's another kind of writing. All right, but all right. it's getting structure, getting melody, and obviously writing solo guitar pieces, which is something I'm very fond of. Uh, I guess I'm around 30 or, maybe more than that pieces now. So they're kind of very important to me because they're central to, you know, all the basic distractions in my life about uh, being in Yes and having done also a return to Asia, although that ended this year uh, with my involvement. Um, it, there was a lot of things I want to do on electric guitar, but I also like to balance that with the knowledge that, um, you know, my, my um, one of my central inspirations is sitting with an acoustic guitar and playing stuff, you know, that, that, that gets me very, you know, very psyched. Well, that's what I like too. Tools of the trade, the artist's paintbrush, all of the above. Well, um, the workshops uh, are also going to include uh, Ray Matuza, Matuza and Flavio yeah. Sala. Flavio Sala, yeah. Right. Um, so I, I'm very happy to to have invited two two friends of mine who are great guitarists in their own right. And uh, Flavio Sala comes from Italy, and he's uh, only about 30 years old, and he, he's really captured the whole classical and now starting on the flamenco repertoire. And um, also he plays Mufaday and a few things like that of mine. So we've had a little bit of collaboration over, over the last few years where we met up and I, I heard a beautiful record he made of Venezuelan music and, mm. and, and uh, that's where he's worked a lot and also in Russia and uh, all over the world. So he's a very well-rounded well, well young guitarist and uh, you know, we've done a little bit of recording together which will come out maybe in, 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 in the future. And um, we've sparred off a lot and talked a lot about guitars together. So uh, Ray Matusa goes back a few more years than my association with Flavio. And um, we played together. He helped me on a couple of gigs that we were doing when the 20th Century Guitar Magazine was in existence. And um, so we, uh, we hit it off. He's got a beautiful early 60s 175D, which I've occasionally played on stage, unbeknown to other people. It was his. It was Ray's. And that's what I'm saying. Steve played my guitar, that's great. So we basically have shared opportunities, a bit like Flavio and I, to, to, to mingle and just get on. So his style of work is very broad, he's into the prog guitar era, he's very uh, uh, knowledgeable about my work, which is a, an added plus he can bring to this, uh, this event. Uh, and also he's very nifty, need I say in inventing so solo ways of playing and also um you know in the, the rock jazz kind of area so you know they're both great guys and, and they're both used to teaching which is also quite good i mean i am to some extent over the years i must have done 20 or so um workshops i've done them you know with rock school i've done them in british schools um you know i've done them at the base center i've done them all over the world really and that's been you know really quite fun so what I'm doing myself on this is to, you know, have a, a, a backbone of topics and, and things that I, I feel I can discuss, I can enlighten, enlighten people about my enthusiasm, but also um, talk about the different aspects of being a musician. Um, you know, there's all the performance, recording, writing stuff. There's how to keep the business and the personal life kind of, you know, um, they need some t a lot of taking care of, uh, particularly your personal life, of course, which is kind of central to uh, the other springboard thing is about food and relaxation and sleep and, you know, how, how much do guitarists need to live the rock and roll lifestyle? In fact, 
that's a very detrimental lifestyle yeah. to lead. And uh, so the more you can steer yourself away from the apparent sensational pluses that might exist to being a musician, most of it, if you really want to be a, a, a musician, uh, are, are kind of irrelevant and they get in the way. So, you know, about focusing on, on your goals. And so I hope to bring this kind of, you know, less ac academic, but more uh, about it, my experience. You know, it's been over 50 years I've been playing. God, that's a long time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I still got this love and enthusiasm, and I want to pass it on. You know, I, I want to, and my quest over the last 10 years has been always to pick up on new guitarists. You know, young, some of them are very young people I've met who play wonderfully, and uh, other players are you know, hidden all around the world, you know, and they have um, a lot to offer me as well as me helping to introduce some of them to the, to the broader public if I could. So, um, you know, I think my guitar approach is actually much more rounded than it's ever been because I've got older and because I've um, kind of been a bit of a sponge, you know, for the whole guitar um, family of instruments, as you and I were only talking yesterday about the Portuguese guitar. Right. Different things I've walked into in my life, like the steel guitar, the dobro, all those pedal steels, um, all those things have really enriched what I want to do. And they were the palette, you know, that more colorful palette that I think no guitarist can really afford to ignore. It doesn't mean you've got to go out and, and buy loads of guitars, but even before, yes, I was, I had a half a dozen, you know, they made different sounds, and I wanted that. So I pass on my experience, and that's really what my um, my workshops are about. But each one will have a, a, a destiny, you know, will have a, a structure that I will be um, delivering, if you like. But there is also, um, you know, room for some performance, um, questions and answers, and also, um, you know, demonstration of, of how I got to how I got to certain musical points and uh, obviously I'll be picking out bits of music that I, I, I particularly like and I'm particularly excited to to talk a little more about than, than, uh, than you know, the, my whole repertoire which is pretty huge in a way. Uh, fun though. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity for uh, students and enthusiasts of guitars to have an, an intimate uh, experience to extend their their guitar knowledge and and to have uh, fun with lots and lots of other guitar players uh, in in concert with you and uh, in a beautiful setting with great food and and wonderful little cabins and tent arrangements and things. Um, the the um, I think we should uh, just go over once again um, the timing uh, August 19th through August 23rd. Uh, at the Blue Moon Resort in Big Indian, New York. It's called the Cross Styles Summer Camp. Info at crossstylesmusicretreat.com. And the phone number is 845-254-8009. Uh, you've got to register if you want to attend the camp. It's a tremendous opportunity to extend your love of guitar if you if you love the instrument and, and uh, with one of the uh, greatest uh, professors and doctors of the guitar, Steve Howe. <laughs> Steve, talk me up some more. Talk me up some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly feel that way, and and uh, it's it's great to have a chance to talk to you. Anything else you want to say? Well, I just had an idea. Maybe I should do an introduction too. So they got a cutaway that that's me saying some of what you said, just encapsulating. So I would I would say what it is, and then I'd read maybe what I've what I've already wrote for for the announcement. Or will they really not want that? I think it's quite good, and it does kind of encapsulate quite a few things. Mm -hmm. So I would start by saying, you know, hi, this is Steve Howe, and I'm going to be the host. And then go on and say about the date, and then jump straight to. Of course, over the four days, I'll be giving workshops that will explore the. You know, so it's a pack, a little tight package they can use either separately or. Well, maybe I should conclude this this segment and 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 start up again. Okay. So uh, thanks for joining us, Steve Howe, Dick Boke, and and uh, hope to see you at Cross Styles. Thanks very much. <laughs>